and that's just the personnel of their basketball team. They've got all five guys that can shoot it, and Pittsburgh's going to have to be up defending that three-point line tonight with their hands active to have a chance to win this game. Really don't play a true five. They will spread it, and here is the pit pressure and almost a turnover. Those Sessoms down the lane in a Binghamton lead. Yeah, tough break there for Pittsburgh. Did a very good job trapping that ball screen early. Nothing Bearcat lead. They try to go into the post, and Sessom strips it away. He'll pull for a transition three. Well, Sam Sessom's coming down on the break, feeling it early. Very good defensive team. Uh, they rely heavily on the defense because, just because they're not a great offensive team. and uh, They're going to have to do a good job here. Too easy right there for Binghamton getting to the rim. Coach Cable's certainly not going to be happy with that play. Is Xavier Johnson, the man we highlighted in the open. He is really one of the elite players in the ACC. McGowan's deep three. Picking up right where he left off on Monday night. Pretty much their only source of offense in the game. Really stepped up big late, made some crucial shots, and that's a good sign for Pitt coming out early. If they don't win that game without him. As Sessoms has it going early. You know, the, the amazing thing about that, talking to Coach Cable today, is with Xavier Johnson, one of their better players on the bench, is McGowan since another three. Oh, by the way, Xavier, you got to play a little better to earn those minutes late in games. Here he is in the lane, and he's on the board. And, and that's what Coach Capel would like to see him do. They got this program moving in the right direction in, in a very short period of time, so he deserves a lot of credit for where they are. Well, he knows that guys like McGowan's need to be better as Audis Tony with the left hand. Oh, it looks like that guy might be Trey McGowan's. Sessom's got banged up a little bit and then started barking at the referees as Tinsley off the glass. Sessom's sort of disengaged from that play. Jordan Willis has looked a little discombobulated off the bench. Here's Murphy. And that three is too strong. A second and a third chance goes down for Koulibaly. You know, he said, he goes, we had to adjust to our personnel. You know, they've never been a real three-point heavy oriented type team. On the road, the back end of a little two-game trip through Ohio and Pennsylvania as Johnson makes the top of the key three. Johnson, you know, like I said, shooting 39% coming into the game, 12 of 31 on the year from three, so he's certainly capable. They're just, he's the kind of player you would classify as a streaky shooter, creating for others, getting to the free throw line. And that's what they got to do right there, get the ball into the middle of the lane. Good touch there by Eric Hamilton. And he's a rebounder first and foremost, Hamilton, but he started to score more of late. Really in the blink of an eye, surge to a 10-point lead as Binghamton inbounds to Saar in the paint. He finds a little window. I, I love doing games with coaches like yourself because you get the stat sheet and you start scribbling all these notes. <laughs> they obviously lost a ton coming off that national championship a year ago, but you know, Tony Bennett, one of the best coaches in the country, and... That's a welcome sight for Pitt fans, seeing Xavier Johnson hit second three of the game. Their shot does not fall. Has there ever been mistletoe in the world that is high enough for you to stand Ooh. underneath it? <laughs> well, the ceilings in my house are only eight feet, so there's not a whole lot of room to spare. Tinsley in traffic rejected. Two on one, up top, Champagne. Well, like I said, it, the window for which they're open is so short because Pittsburgh's doing a good job. Good, good shot there by Sessoms. A good job of closing out with their hands up, which, as a shooter, you think they're running at you, so you should shot fake, and sometimes you might pass up and open three. Kulabali with the left. Turnover this year in the ACC. That's the big thing, with the exception of Louisville. Louisville is kind of the one-season veteran team, a lot of juniors and seniors. A lot of guys I had the opportunity to recruit and coach and trying to figure out how to ace the SAT. You know, it just is, it's... It's very frustrating at times, is what it is. But uh, Pitt obviously coming out here, shooting the ball well from the perimeter. <laughs> Tinsley, and that is good off the window. A promising start for Binghamton. Got to look at the basket. There was nobody playing him. Look at the open spaces for these Pitt offensive players. Splash for Hamilton. Yeah, good job there by Hamilton. Amazing how that changes your mindset, your confidence, and. Uh, not a good pass there by Xavier Johnson. Got to throw it away from the defense, but... Sessoms for three. Yeah, and uh, the start you needed here if you're, Bingham, if you're the Binghamton Bearcats. This is part of the territory with a, a younger team, which, uh, you know, Pitt's not as young as Binghamton, but they're still a young team playing with a lead. And Coach Capel calling a timeout right here. Good start there, but 
Binghamton, you know, it's amazing what happens when you see the ball go through the basket. Champagne, I think, has been really effective as a distributor, and he finds Hamilton. There's going to be growing pains. There just are. It doesn't matter if you're at Binghamton or it doesn't matter if you're at Duke. You know, it, with freshmen who've never done this before, there's just going to be a learning curve. And uh, when he's at home these days, he still looks over into his kitchen and remembers when Callistus was doing dishes at his sink, came over from Nigeria to New Jersey, spent time with a host family there. All in all, the way that they've processed it has been remarkable. Trying to hang around in this game within 17 as Sessoms finds Helmersen in the corner, and that's a big triple. He's really got a chance to make this something special. In Pennsylvania, is, there's another one of those easy second chance points for the Panthers. To learn how to play with the lead and put teams away when you have a chance to do so. You know, we've talked about the ACC and how it is more wide open, particularly in the middle of the league. There is Murphy for three. So they look to find Murphy again. McGowan's instead into the paint. And a good finish there by Augie's Tony. Caldwell has just been totally out of sorts in this game. Good Here's muscle. Murphy after another turnover. To the races. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Murphy. Amazing what seeing a couple shots go through the rim will do for you on both ends of the court. Yeah, and it, it, it started with their defense. You know, they forced a couple more turnovers. Murphy, Murphy check can here he do for Murphy. It again, he can. What did I say before the game? Just like you've seen Pitt this week, paying attention. <laughs> And you're right, the, the shot looks too good to not go in. Sessom's off the window and, and you gotta give Pittsburgh defense a lot of credit. And in this zone, this zone won the game for him against Northern Illinois on Monday night. You know, they, they were preview for later in the summer. I think it's fascinating the, the, the viewership for the league at the moment about ways to bring eyeballs back to it. And there was talk today even as a big-time rejection of J.J. Brown. What rim protection there by Terrell Brown. <laughs> Champagne. And Pittsburgh's big guys do a really good job of knocking down that 15, 14-foot jump shot. They seem to work hard on that, did it a lot shoot around today, but that, that could be an effective weapon going against zone defenses this year. Tinsley finds it. You know, you predicted a lot of things before the game that had come true. As you figured that over the course of this thing, Binghamton just would wear down defensively. And it, it appears that with the space again given to Champagny, that has happened. But it's probably a good thing maybe for Pitt that they're not. not you know, I'm not saying Pittsburgh wouldn't beat them, but Duquesne is 9-0 this year. They have a very, very good team, but yeah, it's... Oni Bucci, Ezia Kuda. Ezia Kuda. And they find the finish for Audis Tony in the paint. Pitt has pulled away their largest lead of the evening, 31 with 3.20 to go. Corner three, and that will fall for J.J. Brown. A lot of situations like this before, but, you know, it, the thing that just confuses me is if it was pretty clear that there was a violation, if that's in the best interest of him and his future and what he needs to do, you know, that's his decision to make, but... His teammates are the ones that are going to be punished because moving in the right direction, I think they have a chance to have a very good conference year. And, you know, Binghamton was picked six and talking to Coach Dempsey today, and he, he has a feeling they can finish in the top three or four of their league, which I think would be a very successful league for them this year, especially given how young they are. He'll be extra alert, trying to pay attention to where the elf is on the shelf tonight. Pet Cash again for three. There you go. You love to see that. So Pitt will have Canisius wake, and then they go to Carolina after a long, much-needed break. Gallagher, one last look for three. Too strong, and the Panthers are going to hold on and blow out Binghamton here at home.